This is my 1993 Chevy C3500 Dually, and we just took this truck on the 2023 Hot Rod Power Tour. Now, I spent the last six months putting this thing together and have made a full build video for you guys. And be sure to stick around till the end where I get a bunch of slow-mo beauty shots of this truck. But for now, let's hop right in to the full build of the Dually Pace truck. If you guys and gals wanna see any part of this build process in more detail, you can hop over to the Motortopia YouTube channel. I'll drop a card up above and you can see every single video that I've done on this build. But the first thing I had to do was get it ready for mirror image auto body. So I went ahead and stripped as much of the body off that I could. I took up all the moldings, the bumpers, all the badges, the side steps, and everything. So when Steven got it at his shop, he can get right to work on the body work. I also stripped the entire interior out of this truck because we're gonna do an entire interior refresh, including a brand new dash, brand new carpet, and really try to make this interior like it would be brand new off the showroom floor. As soon as I dropped this truck off at Mirror Image Auto Body, they got right to work on it. They patched the holes in the bed where the gooseneck hitch was. They sanded down all the surface rust on the truck and started to repair those minor dents and dings in the truck. Now, I know this clip is going by extremely fast, but Steven spent about 250 hours on this paint job. I think that he spent about 200 of those hours just wet sanding. This truck is long. It is a crew cab long bed with the dually fenders. There is a ton of surface area to cover and there is a lot of surfaces to keep flat, but he knocked it out of the park. And if you've ever seen this truck in person or if you ever see it at a show, just take a look down the body line and just look at how flat all of the panels are. I can't say enough good things about Mirror Image Auto Body in Benel, Florida. Steven really knocked this one out of the park. And if you're looking for a great painter to take care of your project, you gotta hit these guys up. Recording this truck on a camera does not do it justice. You really have to see this in person to appreciate the amount of work they put into this paint job. While the truck was over at Mirror Image Auto Body, I went ahead and cleaned and re-dyed all of the interior pieces. I used SEM Color Coat. This stuff works really well. I've used it before on some other projects and it's very durable. The interior of this truck had two different shades of gray. The dash and components on the dash were a little darker shade and then all of the other interior pieces were a little bit lighter. Once that was done, I could move on to installing the lights and trim pieces and some other stuff on the body while I was waiting to get the windshield and rear glass installed. And once the new glass was installed, I was able to do a water test. I wanted to make sure we had no leaks before reassembling the interior. I got this kill mat sound deadener on Amazon. I think it was like the best deal I could find, but I just cleaned the floors really well put this stuff in, and then I installed this on the roof as well. And I also installed this on the doors, the inner door skin to really help with the sound control in this truck. Next, I took the carpet out of the box and let it relax in the sun for a couple of hours. Then I set it in place and got it about where I thought it should be and slowly started to trim the edges. I really wanted to take my time with this and did not want to overcut once I was really happy with the way everything was sitting, I used a really hot soldering iron to burn a perfect little hole through the carpet, and it is a super easy way to locate your holes for the seats. Then I stripped the original headliner off of this backer and installed some new material I got off of Amazon. Once I let that sit for a couple of hours, I was able to get it into the truck and install the center courtesy light, which really held up the majority of the headliner, then I can install this centerpiece. Now, a lot of people have asked me where I got this, and this is actually an original piece that was in the truck when I got it. Now I can install the dash. Now, this is a very tedious process. There's only a couple of fasteners that hold this in place. There's five 
fasteners across the top that go into the pinch weld at the windshield. And then there's a couple of fasteners on the side and at the steering column, but it's all the little parts and pieces that snap into the dash, the wiring harness behind it. That just makes it a little tricky to do. So this took me a little while to get everything set in place, but once all the stuff was done under the dash, the rest of it went together pretty smoothly. Now I can install the Dakota Digital HDX gauges. Doing a test fit, I noticed I had to clearance some of the dash, and I did that with a grinder and some pliers. But once that was out of the way, the gauges slid right into place. Now that the gauges fit in the dash, I got them bolted up and test fit the bezel just to make sure everything fit well, and thankfully it did. Now it's time to turn my attention to the wiring. I got a wiring diagram for the original truck, and then I cross-referenced that with the Dakota Digital's control box. So once I figured out what wires needed to go where, I simply wired up the control box, and I also installed a new coolant and oil pressure sensor. And then I installed Dakota Digital's Universal Gear Shift Indicator Kit. It came with all the brackets needed to attach it to the transmission, and I ran the wire up to a separate control box. And here I am just programming that control box and you can see me run through the gears now that everything is complete. Now I gotta admit, I was pretty excited to do this next part. I have never deep cleaned upholstery, so this was my first chance to do it, and I was super pumped. And the process seems to be pretty much the same for most detailers. You start with a good vacuuming, then you soak it down with a carpet cleaning solution, and you hit it with a drill brush. I had a combination of this drill brush and a hand brush, and any of the more stubborn areas I hit with my steamer. Now this broke up a lot of the dirt and debris that have been embedded in the seat, and when I hit it with this extractor, I cannot tell you how much dirt and grime and grease I pulled out of these seats. They looked pretty clean to start, but I'll show you a clip where I dumped the bucket of water for the first pass, and I was shocked, but these seats came out so nice. And when you're sitting in the truck, they feel like brand new seats. I think it was at this point in the build when I started to realize I underestimated how much time it was taking me to do almost everything with the truck. Now take this interior for example. I have over 20 hours in just deep cleaning the seats, seat belts, and door panels. But I knew the interior was coming out really nice and I did not want the interior parts I'm cleaning to take away from that. So I may have gone a little overboard, and keep in mind I don't have professional equipment, but the end result was well worth the time. Hey, if you're still hanging around and are enjoying this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. I want Yeah Buddy Garage to be all about inspiring others to build, modify, and road trip their classics. And that's exactly what we did with this Dually. I built it specifically to take on the 2023 Hot Rod Power Tour, and we had the time of our lives. If you have not seen that video series, I'll drop a card up above to day one so you can get a feeling for what it's like to be on the Power Tour. And if you're a returning subscriber, I just want you to know that I appreciate you. And here's the water that came out of the extractor after the first couple of passes. That is disgusting. I could not believe how much dirt was in those seats. After the seats were done, I hit the seat belts. Again, look at how dirty and disgusting these seat belts are. I hit them with a cleaning solution. I ended up stepping up the, the carpet cleaning solution to like a degreaser because of how gross they were. Um, hit them with a steamer, hit them with a drill brush, hit them with the extractor. I probably went over these things between 15 and 20 times to get them super clean. After I did this, I had seen some detailers hit these with a pressure washer to break it up, but look at how good these came out compared to how they started. And of course, the door panels got the exact same treatment. Spray it down with a solution, hit it with a steamer, hit it with a brush, and then hit it with the extractor. And these all came out really clean as well. After way too many hours of work, I was finally able to start putting the seats back in the truck. And I started to get really excited at this point.
Next, I installed new glass in all the doors. Once I got the glass in place, I put in new weather stripping, and I noticed that the windows wouldn't roll all the way up with the new weather stripping. But a little tip for you guys, if you're putting in new weather stripping in your trucks, if you just get some silicone spray and spray down the channels, the window's gonna roll up and down a lot easier. And then after this sat out in the sun for a week or so, the new weather stripping relaxed, and now the windows can go up and down without any issues. Now that the interior is to a good spot, I decided to move to the exterior. Here I masked off the entire truck in preparation to paint the chassis with Eastwood's Rust Encapsulator. Now this is a great option if you already have some surface rust, and since this chassis won't be seeing any sunlight, I didn't put a top coat on it and just used the Rust Encapsulator. Even though you'll never see this work, it gives me peace of mind knowing that the frame and suspension components are painted. Now I get to start working on the Belltech 5.8 drop kit. So the first thing I did was remove the leaf springs. On these leaf springs, there's a helper spring up top, so I removed that and put in a new spring pack bolt. Now I installed brand new bushings and can turn my attention to cutting out the C-notch. Now when I did a test fit on the C-notch, I noticed that the bed brace was in the way and interfering, so I decided to do a relief cut on the bed brace. Next, I put my leaf springs back into position and loosely started to put the suspension back together before I fully committed to drilling and bolting in those C-notches. I repeated the same process on the passenger side, put the wheels back on and put the truck back on the ground and double checked everything to make sure it was exactly where I wanted it. Once I was happy with the results, I committed to drilling out and installing the C-notches fully and finishing up the rear suspension installation. I torqued everything down and the last step of the rear suspension installation was installing the shocks. Once those were in, I could move to installing the carrier bearing spacer and now I'm ready to tackle the front suspension. Now, since I was gonna have the entire front suspension disassembled, I decided to go ahead and replace the tie rod ends. I did this by installing the new tie rod ends before jacking the truck up so I could get the alignment pretty close to at least make it to the alignment shop. I also ordered new upper and lower control arms, which I'll install here in a little bit. But installing a drop kit on a C3500 is essentially the same as any other truck. You take off the tire, you take off the caliper, you take off the rotor, you remove the spindle, yeah. remove the shock, remove the spring, and then you have access to your upper and lower control arms. Once the control arms go back on, everything pretty much goes back together in the reverse order. Steering knuckle goes forward. The final parts to install on this Beltec drop kit are the front and rear sway bars. The front goes in place of the original stock sway bar, but the rear and my truck never had a sway bar, so I had to kind of figure out where it was going to lie, drill some holes in the frame for the bushings, but it came out perfect. Now it's time to fit these 22 inch Alcoas. The first thing I do is install the eight to 10 lug adapter, and now I could throw on this 10 lug so wheel. I knew that these wheels were gonna make such a huge difference in the truck and I could not wait to get them on. The process is exactly the same for the rear wheels. You install the eight to 10 lug adapter. And you put on your inner dually wheel, which the inside face of that wheel is milled to go around the adapter. And you put on your outside wheel and torque and tighten everything down. The front wheels did rub a little bit, so I had to work the inner lip of the fender up with this mallet, which is what I'm doing here. Now I used a heat gun to heat the paint up a little bit so I could reduce the risk of the paint cracking, which thankfully it did not, but I was able to work the lip up enough to be able to clear the wheel. And the last major piece to the puzzle, to make this look like the renderings, to make this look like a legitimate Indy 500 pace truck, 
was I had to get the stripe kit on. Now, Orion printed this stripe kit on reflective vinyl, which has minimal stretch, and he wrapped this vinyl around the Dooley fenders, which was an incredible feat for him to be able to do that. And the results are literally amazing. The look that this stripe kit adds to the truck is night and day. Just wait for the beauty shots of this rig. But if you're ever needing any custom graphics made for your ride, or if you need professional window tinting services, hit up Orion at the window tent shop and he will take care of you. And since we were on a time crunch, this was the Saturday before the Sunday we left for the power tour, I worked in Orion's shop to put on the last few details, which included this beautiful AZA auto wheel steering wheel. It has a carbon fiber upper and lower piece with perforated leather sides with ergonomic grips cut right into the steering wheel. It has a smooth leather centerpiece and it is a beautiful finishing touch to this beautiful interior. Man, this truck turned out way better than I ever expected. It is a blast to drive and it gets so much attention running down the road. And as with any of my trucks, this one is not done. I have to get it ready to start running my car hauler around because this is my new tow pig. But if you guys enjoyed this video and you like watching people build, modify, and road trip classic cars and trucks, do me a solid hit that subscribe button and I'll do my best to provide you with some killer videos. Next up, we're taking this truck to Lebanon, Tennessee to the Southeastern Truck Nationals. That is the biggest GM truck show east of the Mississippi. Last year they had 1,700 GM trucks. But that's gonna do it for me on this one. I really appreciate you hanging around. I'll see you guys in the next video.